Hello everyone, welcome to Thyrus Web Development Tips and Tutorials. Today's video, we will implement the light and dark mode of a web page using Tailwind CSS and Alpine GS using a toggle switch where the user can switch to light mode or dark mode. And the best part is this data persists. So let's say you open this in a new tab, it continues to stay in dark mode. So you'll not have to annoy your users by opening it again in light mode and then asking them to switch to dark mode. Let's see how all of this is done using Tailwind CSS and AlpineJS. This video is sponsored by Showcase, a social network built and optimized for developers and coders. Devs can connect to like-minded individuals and showcase their projects. You can share blogs, videos, projects, code snippets, and short messages. If you are a content creator, you can choose to put your content behind a paywall. Whether you write daily tech articles, share career advice, or make tutorials about certain frameworks, you can make some money through paid subscribers. Join me and thousands of developers on Showcase today. Let's start with the simple light mode version of what we're going to implement. So this is what we have. The toggle switch is here, but it doesn't work yet. It just shows that the light mode is highlighted when you click on it, nothing happens yet. So we will implement the dark mode styles and everything in Tailwind CSS and uh, make sure that it switches to dark mode when clicked using AlpineJS. So I have created a simple project where I've installed Tailwind CSS as a post CSS plugin. So you will see the post CSS config file and you will see the Tailwind config file as well. So here I'm using the JIT mode. If you don't know about JIT mode yet, you can watch the video there. Uh, but that installation is quite different from this one. I'll soon come up with a video for installation for this current installation that I have done right now. Uh, for this, you have to mention the purge path. So all my index, all, all my HTML files are within the public directory. So this is where it is. If you want to use JIT mode, this is necessary. You will have to mention the parts where you have your Tailwind CSS classes. And you will also notice that I have uh, required the extended color palette of Tailwind CSS because I needed the cyan color. Uh, that's it. I haven't made any other changes to this config file otherwise. And here I have this Tailwind.css as a custom style sheet because I have some labels and buttons as components that I'm reusing. And I use this build script uh, where I use post CSS to build this custom style sheet, tailwind.css, and output it to the public directory styles.css, which is what is linked in our index.html. Here, okay. So these are uh, the minimum this is the minimum markup and tailwind styles for the web page you just saw here. So this is what it is. I have opened it with live server and here I have already started npm run build. Let me do it again. npm run build. So it's watching the changes that I make here and live updating here. All right, so this is uh, where we begin. Now let's see how to create a dark version of this and also implement the toggle switch. The first thing you need to do is go to tailwind.config.js and change this false to class. Now what is this class? There are two ways you can implement dark mode in Tailwind CSS. One is using the media. That is when a user has uh, has dark mode set up on his operating system, Tailwind is able to detect that and directly switch to dark mode if it's available in your styles. It'll directly switch if you have the value set to media. But that's not what we want because we have the toggle switch and we want the user to select on our web page whether they want dark mode or not, which is why we use this class. That means wherever we set dark as a class name, it will search for all the dark mode classes and apply them. Okay, let's let's see a simple implementation of this. Now that I have this set to class in the index.html, let's add dark variant that is for dark mode. Set the background to 
gray 800 but this will not work so if you save and if you look at here nothing happens because we haven't yet told the html to use these variants right so to do that on a parent element it could be any parent element you could add another div here or directly to the body element you can set a dark class right because we are using this value as class we can set a dark class and depending on this if this class is set then the background will be gray shall we verify yes so you see the background is set to gray because we have this dark class if i remove this this is what happens so what we need to do now is set the dark styles for the elements that we need to change appearance in dark mode and using alpine js whenever the user toggles to dark mode we need to set this class to dark now we are doing it manually but let's do that using alpine.js okay for now just to change all the styles to dark i will add this manually and let's see what we need to change we need to change the label colors first they are too bright here so for that let me go to the tailwind.css custom and here I'll add this at the end because that's the best practice. I'll add all dark styles together. I'll say BG Cyan 900. Okay, the background color is great, but we need to change the text color. So I'll say dark text gray 200. Okay, that looks great. The next thing we need to change is the text here, which is absolutely not visible. And that we need to do uh, directly here. So here we, we see that this is the generic uh, styles, text gray 800. So let me change that here. Dark mode, text gray 100. Right, so that's automatically taken care of. Uh, now these buttons, they look fine. If you want, you can change the you know make them a little lighter but i think that looks fine yeah the next thing you need to change is uh this light is not visible let's make it visible where is light it's here so for dark mode text gray maybe 600 because it's supposed to look muted yeah it looks muted now or maybe text gray 500 yeah that that looks more visible and here dark mode needs to be highlighted now because that's the uh, current mode text white okay yeah so this looks great uh, now this background also needs to be changed and the background is here pg gray 300 but let me add it at the end of it dark bg gray maybe 700 or 600 should be better yeah 600 is great this looks fine but we need this switch or uh, what do you call this yeah the switch to be on the right side so the way we can do that is we can use the translate property and translate it to the right whenever the dark mode is on uh, I've already added the transform duration and ease and out so that it smoothly transit smoothly translates to the right. So let's add dark translate x3. Okay. So yes, we have that done. Uh, this is great. I think all the dark styles are ready. Now let me just remove this to check if everything's fine. Yes. And if I add this back, everything's perfect. Great. Now, only thing is I don't want to use this on the body directly. Uh, instead, I will add another div here, which I will use for the light and dark mode. Okay. And this div needs to close at the end. So now the functionality has to be achieved using alpine.js. Let's go to alpine.js.dev and install it. 
dive in installation and this is the cdn link copy it paste it here so now with alpine js we have the main x data directive where we store the state of some variables in in this case the only variable that we need is dark mode whether dark mode is true or dark mode is false so what we do is we have a dark mode variable set to false to begin with okay and here based on whether dark mode is set to true or false we add the dark class and how do we do that we can bind the class so you can say x bind class or simply use the shorthand that is just a colon behind the class and here within curly braces what we do is we say use the dark class that is add the class dark if dark mode equals true all right i'm using the boolean that's that's why i just use the triple equal to so set the class to dark if dark mode is true great so let's just manually verify this right now sorry right now dark mode is false that's why we see this light mode in case sorry let's change this here manually if you begin with dark mode is true then yes you see that the dark class has been added you can verify it if needed inspect element yeah class dark has been added and that's why we see the dark mode now let's use this toggle switch to actually change the value of dark mode now i'm using this toggle switch as the label for this input right so you see input id is toggle and i'm using label for toggle so what happens is whenever you click on the switch this input element this checkbox is checked and unchecked uh, let me show that to you inspector where is the input yeah the input is here which is hidden so let me change that so you can see the checkbox here and the moment i click on this you see it's checked and the moment i click on this it's unchecked so that's how it works so what we need to do is we need to detect the change on this checkbox and whenever it's changed we need to toggle the value of dark mode okay let's do that uh, first let me change this back to false that's where we want to start and now to the input element let's use the x on directive that is whenever there's an event that happens like a click or a change we can use this directive x on change is what we need right now that is whenever this changes do something uh, but we can use the shorthand for that which is at change whenever this input is checked we want to toggle the value of dark mode so just say dark mode equals not of dark mode so that does the trick and let's also bind the value of this again we can use the x bind directive or the short for that is just colon the value of this will be dark mode so let's see this should actually work let's click on this yes it toggles click back on this and we have light mode great so this is actually all that you need but we have one simple problem let's say the user comes here and chooses dark mode and then does some actions moves to another page now when it moves to another page this data is not carried forward right there is no checkbox on the other page which is checked or the data dark mode is not going to persist so what happens is he will lose that choice so he'll again be directed to a light mode which is quite annoying this is not what we want so how do we make that data persist across all pages and also let's say he opens this in a new tab he should again see dark mode here to make that happen we can make use of the local storage in javascript how do we do that 
what we need to do is whenever the dark mode value changes, we'll have to store it in the local storage and fetch it back from local storage to show the correct mode. For this, let's make use of the x init directive. That is, whenever this component initializes, it first runs this. Okay, uh, let me format this a little. And within x init, we want to make sure of the watch magic property. Let me show that to you in Alpine.js. Yes, this is the watch magic property that you can use watch magic method sorry you can use the watch magic method to watch a particular value in this data and then appropriately run a function here what we want to watch is we would like to watch the value dark mode and whenever this value changes use the arrow function and store this particular value in local storage so local storage dot set item i will call that dark mode again dark mode value all right so it's not enough if we just set it we also need to get the item right so before we do the watch let's say dark mode equals local storage dot get item dark mode so here we initialize it to false but then immediately we check so if there is a local storage initially the moment the user first time enters your web page there won't be any local storage right so nothing happens to this it won't change but once there is a choice once the user has made a choice switch to dark mode then this local storage will have this value set and and this will work. The only problem with local storage is that some browsers store only string as a value. But here our dark mode data is a boolean. So we will run into problems because it will set the item as a string. And later when we check here triple equal to true, this will not work correctly for us. Which is why instead of directly setting the items, directly setting the value, we can use json.stringify. So we can save, store it as a json value, json.stringify, and while getting it back, we can do a json.parse. That way, we will get the Boolean value correctly. So this is all that needs to be done, let's see if this works for us. First thing is check. Yes, it does switch to dark mode and back to light mode. So we didn't break anything for sure. So let's say I select dark mode and then open this in another tab. Yes, we have dark mode persisted. Now let me switch this back to light mode and I will refresh this page. Yes, we have it in light mode. You can also cross verify this, click on dark mode, open your console and type local storage. You see it's set to true and that's why we have dark mode. And also note what I mentioned, it's stored as a string. So we can't directly use the value. We will have to save it as a JSON and then parse it. All right, so this is about it. I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial. If you loved it, do share it ahead with other people. And of course, I would like to see some of the projects you implement this in, in the comments below. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you for watching. Hit a like and share this video ahead. If you enjoyed watching this, don't forget to subscribe below and turn on the notifications so you won't miss a single video from Tyrus.